Hi everyone and welcome to today's lesson on balancing equations. So this links as well to conservation of mass and it's really really important in the GCSE chemistry course and it's vitally important that you understand it. Um, so if you are writing this down please do write down the title which is balancing equations. You have some key words here as well if you'd like to write those down you're more than welcome and you've got the learning objectives at the top. OK, if you're not writing this, this down, OK, and you don't have access to a pad or paper, um, that's absolutely fine. You can take part um, just by listening um, and doing the activities either in your head or out loud. So if you are writing this down, it's balancing equations. You can write down the keywords and there is something for you to think about, something to think about just to start you off and to lead you into today's lesson. Um, so have a look at this. OK, so this is actually calcium carbonate. Yeah, calcium carbonate. I want you to have a think about how many elements are there and how many atoms are there. OK, there are two different questions and it's really important that you understand the difference between these key terms. How many elements are there and how many atoms are there? I might help you by saying how many different elements are there? Right, so have a think, please, and be ready with your answer. Let's break this down a little bit. OK, so let's get into the session by breaking down this question. So again, we've got calcium carbonate here, and these were your two questions to think about. I've kind of put a visual on the screen as well, just to help those visual learners um, and, for, and for you to see what's really going on. So this is calcium carbonate. I have a calcium atom. I have a carbon atom. Yeah, because calcium, carbon, and I have three oxygen atoms. If you do have a periodic table, it might help. It's not obligatory. So um, you don't have to have a periodic table for this session, but it might help when it comes to kind of getting used to these elements. So this is what I've got here. OK, again, I've got calcium carbonates as kind of a visual representation of this um, of this formula. So how many elements are there? Let's break it down. There are three. There are three. There's calcium, there's carbon and there's oxygen. OK, they're the three different elements. How many atoms are there? There are five. OK, so there are five different atoms, one calcium, one carbon and three oxygen. Again, it might seem a little bit easy for some of you, and for some of you it might be a little bit difficult, but it's just to get you uh, thinking about what, you know, what all this actually means. And it's actually really, really important that you understand it before we start balancing equations. All right. So very quickly, I'm going to talk about what is the point of balancing? What is the point? All right. So say if you had this word equation. So in chemistry, we call this a word equation. Hydrogen plus oxygen gives water. It has to be an arrow. OK, it's not an equal sign. In maths, obviously, you have equals. And it's because two plus two equals four. It's exactly the same. But here it's quite obvious that hydrogen plus oxygen does not equal water. It's not exactly the same actually quite different. Yeah? Oxygen is obviously a gas, we need it to breathe in, and, and water is a liquid. So they're different things, but this is actually saying that hydrogen plus oxygen, which are the reactants, they're on the left-hand side of the equation, they make water in a reaction. So this is kind of what's happening in reaction. You might be looking at this GIF, you might be a little bit um, preoccupied with this GIF at the moment, and that is because actually you think, well, that's not relevant at all. Actually it is. What is happening is um, we are uh, reacting hydrogen and oxygen, okay? So what we're doing there is hydrogen in the balloon. Usually there's helium, isn't there, in balloons, but in this balloon there's hydrogen. That's why it's so explosive, it's very reactive. And we're reacting it with oxygen, we're giving it a little bit of a, a kickstart, we're kickstarting the reaction, they're giving it a bit of activation energy with that flame. So this is actually reacting oxygen with hydrogen and we're getting water. You probably won't see lots of droplets of water because of the reaction is so explosive, it evaporates straight away. But this is actually showing what's happening in the reaction. You might be familiar with this kind of reaction. Now, this is a symbol equation, OK, and it's showing the elements or compounds involved. So I can say, right, OK, so I've got an ele the element hydrogen. Yeah, it hangs around in twos. It's diatomic. It's reacting with the element oxygen, again, diatomic, and it makes water. OK, they're the symbols. That makes sense. This, however, is even better. 
Okay, now you'll notice that the elements have stayed the same. I've got two high, you know, I've got two hydrogen atoms, two oxygen atoms that make um, water. And again, I have to have them as diatomic. I have to have H2 and O2. That can't change. We'll come into that a little bit more later. If I'm losing you, don't worry. We'll keep going over this. Um, and it represents what's actually ha what actually happens in the reaction. Okay, it follows the law of conservation of mass. Right, which means mass that cannot be created or destroyed. It's a fancy way of saying that everything on this side of the equation, okay, all of the reactants must equal all of the products. Yeah. And it follows the law of conservation of mass. I cannot have atoms that just disappear in my reaction. And similarly, I can't have atoms that just appear. So if you look at this equation, okay, look at my mouse for me. If you look at this equation, it's saying I've got two hydrogen atoms, okay? They're reacting with two oxygen atoms. And what I get at the end is two hydrogen atoms, which is what I started with, so that's fine, but I only get one oxygen atom. That doesn't make sense. We've had one oxygen atom that's completely disappeared in the reaction. And that doesn't make sense. It doesn't follow the law of conservation of mass, okay, is a law in which everything must follow. You might have heard conservation of energy in physics. It's very similar. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, all right? Um, so that's what we're looking at today, okay? We're looking at balancing, and the reason for it is to, to uh, follow the law of the conservation of mass. Also, the ratios, okay, so these large kind of multipliers at the beginning, um, they're really important when it comes to calculations later on in chemistry. So when you're doing moles, when you're doing reacting masses, maybe when you're doing percentage atom economy, if you're a separate scientist, um, these are vitally important as well. So it's really important that you understand. Right, to get you started, what I would like you to do, if you have got a piece of paper, this is where it's going to come in really handy. Of course, you can just do this verbally. If you're watching this on your phone, you can have a look at these different substances or these different compounds. And then you can just do this verbally. I've started it off for you. So I want you to get into the habit of uh, identifying the atoms, okay? And identifying the elements and how many of each atom there are. So I've given you um, a starter by saying that there is in this carbon dioxide, this is the substance, don't worry too much if you don't know how to say it, but this is carbon dioxide. There is one carbon atom and there is two oxygen atoms. OK, and I want you to do the same thing, please, for each of the substances underneath. Um, you might be thinking, oh, this is easy, but actually it's really important that you understand what's going on with the harder uh, compounds at the bottom, OK, because there are brackets. Think about what brackets mean in maths is all I'm going to say. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to pause this video and have a go at this activity. OK, so if you haven't done that, please make sure you pause the video now because I'm going to go through the answers. All right. So have a look at my answers. I'm not going to go through all of them. I will say don't worry if you spelt sulfur differently. OK, so there's a couple of different spellings. Um, I am going to quickly go through these last two. OK, so hopefully you can see that there is one magnesium atom. And I've got OH, so I've got an oxygen hydrogen, but that's in a bracket and I have two of all of that. All right, so this two next to the bracket means I've got two of all of that. So I have two oxygen atoms and two hydrogen atoms. Obviously in maths, maybe at maths, you're thinking, okay, I'm just gonna multiply however many is inside by the number outside the bracket, and you can do that as well. So for example, here, you know, I'm saying I've got two lots of NO3, <clears throat> which means I can just multiply. So I've got six oxygens, three times two, and I've got two nitrogens, one times two. Okay, um, if you didn't get any, if you, know, if, you, if you got a couple of those wrong, I would really, really uh, suggest, strongly suggest that you go back and, and, and kind of try and understand it, correct it and have another go because it's really important before we move on. Okay, let's get to the kind of juicy bit, the balancing equations bit. Let's have a look at what's on the, the, what's on the screen. <clears throat> so you have, you have hydrogen, you have oxygen and it's making water. Now that uh, is the, generally what's happening in, a, in, um, in the reaction, okay? So you have hydrogen and oxygen and it makes water. That is true. This is not balanced. Have a look. I have two atoms of hydrogen. I have two atoms of oxygen and I've got water over here, which is two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So something's not right, okay? It's not balanced. 
remember, everything on this side of the equation must equal everything on this side of the equation. So let's look at this visually, all right? Let's look at what's going on. So this is just a visual representation of the uh, symbol equation above, all right? Two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen, and this is an atom of water, yes? Two of hydrogen and one of oxygen. Now, I, what I can do is I can uh, put big numbers, I can put multipliers or big numbers in front. So I can put a big two or a big three or a big four. I cannot change these small numbers, the subscript numbers we call them. Okay, I cannot change it because it makes it something completely different. You might think, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna put a little two here. Look at my mouse. I'm gonna put a little two here. Yeah, then it's balanced. Uh -uh, that is wrong. I cannot change the small numbers. And that's because in chemistry, if I change the small numbers, the subscript numbers, it completely changes what it is, all right? For example, if I did do that, if I said H2O2 with a little two there, that's not water anymore. That's not water. I've actually made hydrogen peroxide, I've made bleach. And that's just not true, yeah? Hydrogen plus oxygen doesn't make bleach in this reaction. So I cannot change the small numbers. It completely changes what it is. I know that's quite strange to think, but if you think, oh, I'm just gonna play around with the small numbers. What if I was to change this two to a three? Surely I can do that. Uh -uh. You cannot do that in chemistry, okay? Because actually it changes again what it is. So if I change this to a three, it'd be ozone. It wouldn't be oxygen at all, a completely different substance, all right? So I can change the big numbers. Let's change the big number, okay? So let's think, right, I'm then gonna, uh, put a two in front of this water, which means I have two water molecules. I'm then going to check it's balanced. All right, so on the right hand side, the right hand side of the arrow, I now have two oxygen atoms. And on the left hand side of the arrow, I have two oxygen atoms. Yes, oxygen's balanced. However, look what we've done. On the right hand side of this arrow, I now have four atoms of hydrogen. One, two, three, four. Yeah, look here, I've got four atoms of hydrogen all together. On the left hand side of my arrow, I've got two. Uh -uh, it's not balanced. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna change this small number or are you gonna put something at the front of the hydrogen? I'm hoping you're screaming at me, put something at the front. I'm gonna put a two at the front. Ding, this is now balanced. This is a balanced equation. Always go over it at the end. Never just think, oh yeah, I'm done. Because you always want to double check. So you want to check, right, I've got two lots of H2. So I have four hydrogen atoms altogether. On this side, I have four hydrogen atoms. Excellent, that's balanced. Right, let's go back and check the oxygens. On this side, I have two oxygen atoms. And on this side, I have two, because this number is, is, is saying that everything that comes after it is multiplied by two. Okay, so I have two oxygen atoms. This is now a balanced symbol equation. Let's have another go, and then we'll do lots and lots of practice so you will understand it. So just to go over, this small number is the subscript. It tells us the number of atoms. Yeah, like for example, there are two. And this big number, the multiplier, it tells us the number of molecules there are all together. So there are two waters. If you want to write any of this down, you're more than welcome to. I'd suggest maybe that you stop this video and kind of write down these key points. Let's have another go then. If you want to pause the video at this point and you're thinking, right, yeah, I'm understanding this. I'm gonna have a go myself, please do. OK, but if you want to a little bit more explanation, a little bit more extra support, let's let's do it together. All right. So I have one potassium. Let's get my visual up. OK, so I have one potassium atom here. I have two atoms of oxygen, OK, which are here and it's giving me potassium oxide, which is K2O. I cannot change the small numbers because that changes what it is. And we have been told that we have a reaction of potassium with oxygen and it makes potassium oxide. So I cannot change the subscript numbers. What are you going to do? Well, firstly, you should think, right, I've got two potassiums on this side and I've got one potassium. Mm, I'm going to change that. I don't like that. OK. You might also be thinking, well, I've got two oxygen atoms on this side and I've got one oxygen atom on this side. It doesn't matter what you start with. OK, let's start with the oxygens. Let's start with the oxygen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another potassium oxide. I'm going to do that by putting a two in front of this, um, in front of this. OK, so I've got two potassium oxides. Let's double check. So now I'm happy when it comes to oxygen because on this side, I've got two oxygens. And on this side, I've got two oxygens. Hopefully you can see this. 
am I happy with my potassiums now? Oh, it doesn't look it. I've got one atom of potassium on the left-hand side, and I've got four atoms of potassium on the right-hand side. Look at the kind of purpley pink um, spheres, okay? So I've got one atom of potassium on the left, four on the right. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna put a big four in front, okay? Now, this looks balanced to me, but of course, let's check. So on the whole of the left-hand side, I've got four potassiums and the whole of the right-hand side, I've got four, because two times two is four, okay? On the whole of the left-hand side, I have two oxygen atoms and the whole of the right-hand side, I have two oxygen atoms. Again, remember this big number means all of that is multiplied by two. Really well done if you did that without any help. I'm really impressed, okay? Right, so before um, I let you loose on loads of examples, let's have a quick game of balanced or unbalanced, all right? So all I want you to do you have five examples on the screen. All I want you to do is I just want you to tell me if they are balanced or unbalanced. A little bit of a word of warning before I tell you to pause the video. Remember to look at everything on the left-hand side of that arrow, all of the reactants, all right? So all of the reactants, like how many hydrogens are there on all of this left-hand side? It looks like there are two. Look at everything on the right-hand side and go, how many atoms of hydrogen have I got? Hmm, looks like one. Is that balanced or is that unbalanced? That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say watch out for number five. It's my only piece of advice. Please pause the video now and I just want you to tell me if one to five are balanced or unbalanced. Off you go. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give, go through the answers So make sure you've had a go. If not, please quickly pause it and have a go now. Here are the answers. All right, so we've got unbalanced, balanced, unbalanced, unbalanced, and this one is really tricky. I'm impressed if anyone spotted that it was actually balanced. I'll quickly go through number five, because uh, this is really tough. Now remember, it's all of the reactants must equal all of the products, okay? The numbers of atoms on the left must equal the number of atoms on the right because of the law of the conservation of mass. So let's start with hydrogen on the left. There's a hydrogen here. This is Cl, by the way. Sometimes that looks like an I, doesn't it? But that's Cl for chlorine. So there's a hydrogen here. And oh, look, there's a hydrogen there as well. So there are two hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side, and there are two hydrogen atoms on the whole of the right-hand side. So really well done if you spotted that. There is one chlorine atom on the left and one chlorine atom on the right, um, and there is one sodium on the left, and there is one sodium on the right. And the same with oxygen as well. So actually that is perfectly balanced. Really well done if you did that. If you got any of them wrong, I'd suggest going back and working through your answers and just to make sure that you really understand. All right. Um, so let's let's put this into practice. So what I'm going to suggest again is I'm going to suggest that you pause this video and have a go at balancing. Remember what I said in terms of you cannot change the small numbers, the subscript numbers, but you can change the big numbers in front. You can change the multipliers. And actually, you can have a play around. So if you get it wrong, you know, say if I was to just straight away, say if I was to put um, a four in front of this lithium, I don't know why I'm just going to put a four. That's OK. You can have a play around. And then you can think, right, OK, I've got four lithiums. I'm just going to put a four in front of here, which means I've got four lithiums. And then let's have a look at the chlorines. So you can get creative. OK, I'm going to suggest then that you pause the video and have a go at these four examples for me. Four examples. Okay, again, I'm gonna go through the answers. So please make sure you've had a go. And um, it's really important that you're engaging in this lesson. I'm not just kind of listening and thinking, hopefully it'll, you know, all of the, this knowledge will kind of diffuse into your brain. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Balancing equations is actually quite difficult. And a lot of people find it really tricky. Um, and I don't blame you if you do find it tricky. So please make sure you're actively engaging and having a go at these examples. It really will help. So I'm just gonna put the numbers in now in terms of the answers, okay? So really, really well done if you've got that correct. You can see the kind of green um, numbers at the front which give the correct answers. By the way, word of warning, if you put a four in front of lithium, a two in front of the chlorine and a four in front of this, that's actually technically correct, right? Because you've just doubled all the numbers. So actually, if you're looking at this and think, well, I've doubled all my numbers, that's actually okay. 
yeah, because it's technically scientifically correct. Yeah, it follows the law of the conservation of mass. These are the simplest numbers. Okay, so these are the simplest ratios. What I'll do is I'll give you an opportunity to kind of go through, make sure again that you tick them correct, or if you cross them, if you got them wrong, and work through the ones that you got incorrect again. Really impressed if you're following so far and you're starting to get these right. That's fantastic. Okay, I'm going to leave you now um, with just some extra practice if you want. Okay, so the final learning objective is to practice a range of examples in order to master balancing chemical equations. So I think now that you've got to grips with it, maybe you understand uh, the principles of balancing equations, but I'm going to leave you with some optional extra practice just to really make sure you master this. Um, so if you want, what I'm going to say is I'm going to suggest that you can pause the video now and have a go at these um, six. So these, these are the final six um, sort of practice problems. OK, um, so pause the video. Again, it's a really, really good idea. And I suggest having a piece of paper so that you can write it because this is this is really difficult. And I think um, a lot of people would struggle to do this just from looking at it. And in your mind, it's really it's much better to write it down. The ones at the bottom, guys, are tricky. They are very, very difficult. So really well done. And I'd suggest only maybe if you're taking separate science. Um, if you're taking separate science, then have a go at the bottom couple. If you're just doing combined science or double award, um, just have a go at the top. Yeah, just have a go at the top one or two, maybe. All right. So pause the video before okay and here are the answers so i'm not going to go through them um but again this is just for those that really want to master this here are the answers and you can see that i've put the answers in red so you can always again pause the video and make sure you've got them correct i'm going to also leave you with a different option if you're struggling a little bit and you're looking at these and you're thinking oh my goodness that's actually way too tricky for me that's okay yeah that's okay so for, for those that kind of really want to master this maybe you're taking separate science i suggest having a go at these practice problems um, and I'm going to leave you with this option as well so I'm going to say Google FET simulation balancing equations this is a fantastic little website and I'm sure you might you know you might have come across it in lessons your teacher has shown you it before and um, what I will do is I will actually show you what I mean so if you go into Google and if you go into FET simulation okay balancing equations so it comes up for me we're going to say balancing equations, FET simulation balancing equations. I'm going to click on this first link. You can see I've already clicked on it. And what you can do is completely safe, okay? Um, and it's free to use, which is amazing. It's a fantastic resource. You can click download or play. So I'm just going to click play. Either one takes you to the same page. And if it doesn't take too long, I'm just going to kind of show you what it looks like. You've got an introduction to the game. Now, the game is really good fun. So once you've mastered it, I'd suggest the game. But for now, let's just have an introduction. And look at some of this that's happening. So right straight away, you can see we've got an equation at the bottom. Nitrogen plus hydrogen gives actually ammonia. This is ammonia, NH3. What I might do is I might add this tool. It might help. OK, so this tool might help in terms of seeing what's going on. If it's too much, I'm just going to click none. And you can have a play around, guys. So what you can do is I'm going to add a nitrogen, I'm going to add a hydrogen, and I'm going to add an ammonia. All right. And if you use this kind of this uh, these colours to help you, I've got two blues on this side, and I've got one blue on this side. So let's have a play around. Right. I'm going to add another ammonia. Essentially, it's just more of a visual aid. Okay. And whenever you balance it, it comes up with correct. This is balanced. So if you're struggling a little bit, and maybe like I say, you're more of a visual learner. I would suggest Googling FET simulation balancing equations and having a play around with that. Okay, well, thank you very much um, for taking part in this lesson. I hope you've understood everything and I'll see you again soon.